Alright, Tubers, Matt M. Roy back once again. Wow, what a fantastic score today. Um, I'm still owing and awing from it. Those of you that follow me on Facebook probably already know about this, but what we're going to do here is I'm going to go through it, show you guys exactly what this system has to offer, and then we're going to test it. Hopefully it's going to go well. Um, I'm a little concerned because of the age of it. I am going to take it apart and take a look inside to make sure there are no any not any surprises. I do want to look at the real-time clock or the CMOS battery, see what kind this has, make sure that hasn't leaked. But without further ado, let's get started. This is a Packard Bell Legend 855. Here are the specs. It says, new local bus with Windows Accelerator, Legend 855 Mid-Tower from Packard Bell. There are some of the specs here. We have a 46SX33 microprocessor. Uh, probably no math co There is no math coprocessor there. I believe that's what the SX itself stands for. Though this is going a long way back for me, guys. 4 megabytes of RAM, 250 megabyte hard drive, 1280 by 1024 extended resolution with 1 megabyte of video memory installed. That'll come in handy. Uh, for playing certain DOS games, fax modem and mouse. Do you see one thing missing from this? I'll give you guys a minute to try and guess it. That's right. There is no sound card built. Yeah, sound card built into this model. Um, the only thing I can figure is this is a business system, and back then a lot of business class systems would not have actually come with a sound card. Power Pack features easily upgradable features, high speed local bus video with Windows Accelerator, RAM expandable to 36 megabytes. Wow, 36 megabytes of RAM! I can't even believe it. That is just so much memory. Cache memory expandable to 512 kilobytes. Intel Overdrive ready with ZIF socket. For those of you that don't know what the Overdrive was, that was a uh, basically an add-on card you could get to turn any 486 base system into a Pentium computer. We will not be doing that with this system because I have my share of Pentium systems. I love the fact that this is a 486 SX33. Some of the software packages that came on this, Packer Bell Navigator, I'd really like to see what version that is, because I've only seen the later ones that Billy Core has on his Windows 95 and 98 systems, being that this is, I believe, a Windows 3.1 or even a Windows 3.0 system. be very interesting to see if I can get in there and see exactly what type of Packer Bell Navigator is in here. Microsoft Windows does not actually say what version of Windows that is, so we'll have to turn this on to see what it says. Microsoft Works for Windows, Microsoft Money, Productivity Pack, Microsoft Entertainment Package, which should have the um, Pac-Man and a few other good games in there. Prodigy Service, the old Prodigy Internet Service, and finally MS-DOS and MS-DOS Shell and QBasic. Coming over here, we have our lock right here, which I'm very glad is in the unlock position. Turbo power and hard drive LED indicators. There's your turbo button and your reset button. Um, for those of you who don't know what the turbo is, that was used for older games. You would actually turn the turbo on and it would slow the system down so you could play XT and AT class games on these. It's kind of out of sync. You would think the turbo would make it faster, but actually in this case it's designed to make the system run slower. Now, behind here reveals the two drive options here. We have a 3.5 inch 1.44 megabyte floppy, and then we have a 5.25 inch, I am assuming that is a 1.2 megabyte um, high density floppy disk drive, but I could be wrong. It could be a 7... Uh, 60k double density. We'll look at that later, but just judging by the era this computer's from, I'm still guessing that's a 1.2 megabyte drive. One more expansion bay, I'm assuming for something like a CD-ROM or maybe a second uh, floppy drive. Love that Intel inside logo. 
And last but not least on the front down here is your power button. Now this was sticking when I first got it, but I've uh, pretty much worked that out. This is not an ATX system, this is an AT, so this is a live button. This is not controlled by any um, software or intelligent logic. This is like a on button directly right. to the... Turning to the back here, you can see that somebody has actually been in this case before. You can see the warranty sticker has been removed, which is not surprising considering this computer is probably close to 30 years old now, or I should say maybe 25 years old. Here's your power supply on the bottom, which I will be checking. Hopefully that does not have any nasty surprises. Uh, here's your stickers. Uh, whatever that means. Looks like a service code, service ID. Um, it says Packard Bell, Chatsworth, California. Not sure how many years they were uh, manufactured there, but you can see in the, I, uh, in the FCC ID at the end, it does say it is an SX33 uh, processor in there. Coming up here, it looks like we have one, two, three, four, five expansion card slots. Tip, very typical for a computer from this era. You have your PS2 keyboard and mouse port, um, Super VGA port, uh, joystick gaming port. Yep, I believe that's what that is. I could be wrong. Let me see. Yep, joystick port. You can see a picture of the joystick. Very odd that it has that, considering it has no sound card. But, again, with most computers of this era, that was an option. Uh, parallel printer port and serial port. And this does have a built-in data fax modem. You can see uh, right there. It's where you plug in for the extra phone, and that would be the line in for the modem. All right, tubers, and then there's nothing on the sides here. It is a little dirty. Hopefully, I can get all those scuffs uh, taken care of afterwards. But let's go ahead and open the case up and uh, see all what right, tubers. it has. Wow, what a pain in the butt to get that cover off, but it is indeed off. Uh, the only bowel damage was the uh, power button that actually goes in the front there. And this goes in here, but I'll stick that back on um, once I get ready to put this thing back together. But yeah, here are the guts of it, and it does appear to be complete. Right here we have some sort of hard drive. I believe that is a Connor drive. They're not going to make it out on the, um, on the video here. But wow, look at the way they designed this. There is your five and a quarter inch floppy there. I could tell that looks like a TIAC drive. There's the three and a quarter inch floppy right up top. Then we have a case fan in the front, an NMB. Wow, Flowmax. Take a look at that. It's not a name you see every day. Over here, we have the good old 486SX 33 megahertz processor. So this is stock. There we have our lowly SIM. I'm assuming that's a 4 gigabyte module because I don't actually see any other memory. Um, you see some little uh, slots here for other um, ICs, presumably maybe for other uh, built-in memory that isn't being used. Awesome. Let's see, what is that right there? That is a Headland Technologies. Let's see if I can get a closer look at that. Headland Technologies uh, HT21632. Not sure what that is. That might actually be the uh, modem chip right there. But here's this humongous daughter board here, which has one, two, three, four, yep, five um, ISA slots. Really, really cool. Um, I've yet to find the actual clock battery in here, if it does indeed have one. But nothing appears to be uh, leaking or out of sorts. The capacitors all look good there, the few that it does have. But yeah, I mean, take a look at this, tubers. Check, check out the front. You can see that little key lock up there. Got your uh, two lights there, power hard drive. There's the turbo button and the uh, reset button. Um, there is your two floppy drives. Coming to this side, don't don't really have too much, just the cables out for the power supply. And let's go ahead and turn it on its side here a little bit and get a better look at that uh, daughter board there. That is really massive, and it does appear it's bent a little bit, so I don't want to play around with that too much. You can see that it must have gotten damaged at one point because you can see it's actually outside of that clip. I assume it's supposed to be sitting 
inside like that so I'll have to see if I can fix that before I put it back together but let's go ahead and work on that now I'm gonna go ahead and try to reseat that it looks like it's just one screw here and then uh, yeah we'll get a better All look right, at tubers this motherboard with that and daughter board removed which is sitting right here you can see quite a bit more and if I shine the light right right down there I don't know if the camera will pick it up or not do 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 you can see uh, there we go, that this is indeed a Connor hard drive. I'm not getting this light in very good. There we go. It's a Connor CP30254H hard drive. Looks like it's dated sometime in 1993. So that about, seems about right for this particular system, dating it right around 1993. Now, if you turn it to the side again, and we look there, you can actually see the video chip. Um, this is kind of drawn out here, but it does say SYS. So it's a SYS version 1.01 VGA. So that is your video chip. I still do not see any uh, CMOS battery or anything like that. I may have to dig deeper, but I would say for now, we are good to test this computer. Oh, you know what? There she be. The battery is right over there. If I can move this floppy cable out of the way, you guys will be able to see her. And the battery's sitting right there. And it does not appear to be leaking right now. I'll have to address that at a later date because I want to make sure that does not leak. But yeah, she looks good. So I tell you what, tubers, let's go ahead and get the system put back together and we'll go ahead and give it a try. All right, tubers, about an hour later, I finally got this working. I was having an issue getting the power button to work. I found out it was because there's a little plastic piece missing. In these older AT cases, there's a rod that goes from the front power button all the way down to about here, and there was a button, an actual button on the power supply. So I actually did, if you see that little metal looking thing right there, I actually took that, that's a little end to a coaxial cable that would normally go on something like a, uh, a TV set, and I fabricated that so that the power button actually works, and as you can see, if I get the right one, you can hear it. It's not ideal, it still sticks every once in a while, but it serves its purpose at least for the time being until I can come up with something a little bit better. As, as you can see it's shifted so I'll have to readjust uh, it, but as long as I keep the computer upright it works fine. So we're in the home stretch tubers, we're almost ready to power this beast on. Bear with me just... Alright tubers, here we have the main event, the moment you all have been waiting for. Let's go ahead and turn this on and as USW Bill would say, smoke test! Oh, I'm excited! Oh, I hear the hard drive booting up. Do we get anything on the screen? Huh? <gasps> Woo! I don't believe it, tubers. Check this out. Packard Bell Phoenix BIOS, copyright 1993, 640K base memory. And it went too quick, but it does appear... Ah! It appears we do have some extended memory in here. Looks like about 20 megabytes. Time of day not set. Of course, that of course it isn't because the battery is probably totally dead. So let's just hit F1 and see if it'll boot up. Okay. I don't have anything on the keyboard right now, but you know what? It does function. That is totally awesome. Let me see if I can get this thing to boot up, and I'll be back with All you guys. All right, everybody. I'm going to try a different keyboard. I pulled out this probably more period correct Dell Quiet Key keyboard. Let's go ahead and boot this up again and see if we get any uh, keyboard functionality. Oh, that is like music to my ears. That old sound of that old Connor drive. If it'll focus, there we go. And now the question is, do we have keyboard functionality? Okay, let's try hitting F1. Got no got numlock working. But nothing appears to be working other than that. 
I'm hitting F1 as you can see and nothing is happening oddly enough numlock is functioning huh well I'm gonna have to investigate this further but you know what tubers it does appear the system at least turns on let me go ahead and play around with this for a little while see what might be happening and I'll talk to you All guys right, tubers sadly I'm gonna have to end the video here for now because I'm running into a little bit of, pro of a problem that I hope one of you guys out there might know how to solve Apparently the reason the keyboard is not working is because what's of what's going to come on the screen right here. You can see it says keyboard is locked, unlock, and if I try to do anything, nothing happens. I've tried to research this out, but of course there isn't a lot of um, information on an old Packard Bell like this. I assume maybe it has something to do with this up here. It looks like somebody maybe tried to fiddle with this a while back. But that's all I can do for it right now, because I literally cannot get this computer to do anything. It'll, it, it will actually work with some of these keys over here, but the function keys and everything I need to start the computer is locked up. So I'm asking you guys out there, any of you guys, Billy Core, if you see this, please help me out here. I hope somebody can help me figure out how to unlock this, because I really want to get this system up and running. I hope you guys enjoyed this little video. Please continue to like and subscribe. And as always, have a blessed